So uh, that fits right into my talk tonight because I'm going to be talking about artificial intelligence tonight. And so uh, that's uh, one of the major technology changes uh, from the standpoint of just of administratively and processing things through our practice that I'm really excited about. Uh, our electronic medical records historically are just repositories. It's just where data goes in and you get a little bit out if you're lucky. Uh, an artificial intelligence system, uh, if it's applied uh, in to your uh, EMR or in other parts of what you're doing uh, inside the practice, uh, it, the machine actually has the ability to ingest and digest so many variables of, uh, of what goes on in your practice. So for example, if, it's, if your electronic medical record is an artificial intelligence based system, it can digest all of your clinical pathways. It uh, understands the clinical scenario of the patient and can then project the, path, the appropriate pathway for the patient to you. In addition, it can digest all of the molecular profiling that should potentially apply to that patient based on age, sex, uh, and stage of the patient and disease side of the patient. Put all that in front of you. Uh, it can also uh, digest or ingest all of the information uh, from your local payers uh, about what drugs are covered. In the world of biosimilars today, we're finding that uh, payers are jumping on the biosimilar wagon the minute it is approved. We can't even, we haven't even learned about it yet, and uh, the payers demanding that we use it, and the payer policies are getting so restrictive. Artificial intelligence system can ingest the payer policy. So at the point of care where the physician's making the decision about what um, therapy and supportive drugs to give the patient, uh, the artificial intelligence system can put the payer, that specific patient's payer policy in front of them. In a market like us where we have six ACOs, all six of those ACOs have um, networks that are specific to them. It is impossible to understand uh, when uh, one of our physicians is trying to make a referral to a cardiologist, to a GI doctor, to a pulmonologist, whether that's in network for ACO number one, or is it in network for ACO number two, or three, or four, or which ACO is this patient even in? Again, artificial intelligence can ingest all of that information and put it right at the point of care based on the information that it gleams about the patient. That's all stuff that right now we're having to try and figure out in the back end, retrospectively, in many cases unsuccessfully. Uh, I'm really excited about the, and remember that uh, artificial intelligence system if, uh, can digest what would take us 29 hours to read uh, in about 30 seconds. So uh, all of that is right in front of you at the point of care. That's what I'm really excited about. Clinically, technologically, we're looking at um, really some innovative things coming in radiation and um, in relationship to uh, MRI-guided uh, radiation or PET-guided radiation. Uh, all of those are on the horizon, which really uh, hone in on a much better uh, treatment process for radiation. And of course, on the medical oncology side, it's all about gene therapy and what's coming with CAR-T and all of that. And uh, that's only just begun uh, groundbreaking. So there's so many things out in front of us so many different payer um, uh, limitations, so many different molecular things, so many different genetic things, so many different uh, options that uh, what I'm really excited about is an artificial intelligence system that can put it at the point of care.